Carson's uh, somebody who I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Uh, he's uh, written a book that had a profound influence on me in terms of the material that he presented uh, when he was working at, My at MITRE. Uh, he's currently working at Microsoft. Um, he leads the integration and uh, deployment of next generation cybersecurity monitoring platforms for key Microsoft environments. And I happen to know, based on some interaction with Carson, interaction with uh, folks at Microsoft, it's a pretty complex environment with a very a substantially varied degree of requirements. And that is no small challenge. So um, thank you very much for being willing to, uh, to speak today, Carson. Um, I really, I really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to the, uh, to the talk. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Chris. Can you hear me? Sure can. All right. Um, so let's get started. Um, uh, so a little bit more, more about me. Um, thank you, Chris. That pretty much uh, takes care of it. I'm actually now um, an investigations team lead. That that happened here just in the last couple of weeks. But I'm not coming to you today um, on behalf of my current or past employer. Um, any opinions I express are my own. Um, so let's talk about the inspiration for my talk and, and, and why am I talking to you today? So I've worked with a number of folks here in security operations. I'm going to call them customers for a moment. Some of, the, some of you might call them constituents. And what they think is the following. They send us data and, uh, and then a miracle occurs. Uh, and then that miracle uh, and some magic create breaches. So when, we, when they send us data, they think they're monitored. Is that true? Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Our reality, as most of us know, is that in order for us to actually provide full scope of services to a given customer, there are multiple layers of the stack and generation, including generation collection, storage, detection, analysis, and response capabilities serving that customer. So it's not just a matter of collecting the data. Now we know that, but these are the lies that we tell ourselves and that we tell our customers through omission when we take their data and don't talk to them again. Not only that, there's not, there's too much to do. You know, in the past we'd be like, ah, throw a sensor on it and you're good. <clears throat> and that's not the case anymore. There's too many different kinds of systems including the cloud, ask me about the cloud. Uh, there's too many different, they're in too many different places. There's too many different techniques across the kill chain and the attack framework to detect. We can't do it ourselves. We can't write all of the detections on our own. And in fact, if you look at the classic um, cloud model here on the right, in some cases, the way we're used to instrumenting systems doesn't apply at all. What are we going to do about this? So there are different ways we lie to ourselves and to our customers, either by default, usually not intentionally, but often by default, and the outcome. So collecting data without expectations. The customers think that monitoring is occurring when it isn't thinking that we're gonna create detections for all of the things. We can't do that anymore. Certainly not with over a hundred different cloud resource providers for a given cloud provider, let alone a situation when you're a multi-cloud situation. You're never gonna have enough time and resources to create the detections that you need for all of those different platforms. That has changed, folks. We run detections without testing them. I've run into this so many security operations that they create all these beautiful detections beautiful intent. Have they tested them? No. As a result, a large proportion of their detections don't work. And then finally, we put one sensor in one location and the customer is monitored. Are they? Certainly blind spots remain. So if I had to summarize my, my talk into two bullets, it would be this. Don't lie and don't reinvent the wheel. Now, I'm gonna show you in the next 20 minutes what I mean by that. I'm gonna talk about engaging with the customer 
on formulating that shared sense of situational awareness and shared planning. I'm going to talk about leveraging all of the capabilities that we can, creating and maintaining the detections and analytics, and measuring that coverage along four dimensions. Yes, four. Let's get started. There's an often a complaint. Oh, security is never invited to the boardroom. Guess what? There's ways to do that from a, grounds, a grassroots perspective. We meet with the customer routinely. I'm saying we, all of us, should be meeting with the customer routinely. We, from their end, they talk to us about the changes in the business, new services, expanded services, change services. They talk to us about business context, criticality, and risk from their perspective. And they give us input on our investments. Where should we be scanning? Where we should be monitoring? What hygiene issues should we be paying attention to? Where can we target our detection work? In turn, we tell them, what have we done for you lately? What new sensor deployments do we have, including endpoint and cloud? What new detections and use cases have we put together since the last time we met? What threats, campaigns, incidents, et cetera, can we offer that are relevant to their layer of abstraction? What's their hygiene and compliance status? And I don't just mean the comp compliance two by four and the compliance bat, but yes, that's relevant too. And then finally, what are the new metrics and asks? If I spoke, if I spoke in my last talk at SANS, you don't hit them with a hundred metrics, right? You scope it down so they don't feel overwhelmed. One of the things that folks often get it caught up into is, oh, we have to maintain the exact same level of capability for everyone. I disagree. There's a certain degree of peanut butter that we spread all over everybody, right? So a standard customer might look like the following. You get a standard set of network capabilities, you get the standard EDR, you get the standard set of SIM detections, maybe semi-annual engagement or annual engagement, and some kind of standard set of hygiene controls. And the special Snowflake customers get all of that plus more frequent engagement, more detections on your EDR, a handful of environment or custom uh, or uh, customer or platform specific detections, not too many, but a handful. So they feel the love. In some situations, it is reasonable and appropriate to deputize members of their team actually bring them in and have them participate in writing detections and going on hunts. Amazing. We have the technology we did to do this, folks. And finally, give, give them direct access to their slice of data, understanding we have to do this with care. We don't want folks going off and, and going rogue. That could be a whole other separate talk. In doing these two things, we can work with them to build shared situational awareness at differentiated value. That looks like the following. And in my book, when I wrote it six years ago, I had three pillars of situational awareness. Today, I'm going to show you five. We look at the technological environment, including our non-traditional and shadow IT, our data. That's a new one. When our data sits in so many places that are not, it's not on-prem, we have to look at data as its own pillar. The mission, including consequences, this is the thing we always get wrapped up. Oh my God, system blah got compromised. So what? The regulatory environment, that's a new one. And then finally, the threat, both internal and external. And on top of that, we work with the customer to put together our shared shared instrumentation strategy, data collection strategy, and on top of that, the detections and analytics. When we do this right, it is beautiful. And it doesn't have to be all the customers. It can be a handful of your customers out of a much larger enterprise. From there, we plan on our own and plan in, in with the customer. What does that look like? That looks like internally, we are talking about routine planning. You know, OKRs, for example, Agile DevOps or something like it. We track that data in some kind of tracking repository. We should be putting our detection plans 
are instrumentation plans, just like you would do development. You have a new ask from a customer, that's a new work item. Keep your list, make a list and keep it. Stack rank it. And that way you don't get randomized. And trust me, there's a lot of high needs customers who are gonna say, oh, I need this now, 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 right? Thinking about leveraging others' work. As I stated previously, we're gonna to need to be able to leverage detections that are built by other teams because we don't have the resources at all by ourselves. What does that look like? When I talk about EDR as a special case in just a moment, I'm gonna deep dive on that a little bit. For the network, that looks like Zeke, formerly known as Bro, and Suricata. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of beautiful things with Zeke. Understanding the increasing prevalence of encryption at the network layer is pushing us back to the host and the cloud for our instrumentation and away from the network gradually. Is network IDS dead? Eh, that seems kind of sensationalist to me. I would rather say there's still value in putting network sensors in certain places of the enterprise. We look at our, our data, our capabilities in SIM and big data, right? Go look at CAR, go look at Sigma, go look at what your vendor is putting in their marketplace or their GitHub. Links at the end, by the way, right? So many times we get fixated on backhauling all of their data, terabytes, so help me petabytes a day now. Think about leveraging your customer's data in place without backhauling it. The food fight and the politics and the expense and, and the pain might go down. Am I saying don't backhaul anything? No, I'm saying take a hybrid strategy. And then finally, for your cloud providers, you need to work with your customers through the Azure, the, the uh, excuse me, the policy and governance framework native to your cloud provider to enforce and enable collection of logs and the built-in detections. In fact, I would recommend you demand that your cloud provider provide you inbuilt detections and inbuilt inbuilt threat protection for whatever major resources, high-risk resources that you're talking about and that your customers are using. Cloud is what really inspired my talk here today, folks, is you don't have the time to create detections for 50 different cloud resource providers. I don't. So let's talk about host telemetry. So you need, we all need a whole set of very rich, fairly diverse telemetry from the host. Process creation events, 4688s, network connection events, 51,000 series, authentication directory, login logups, log 4624s, right? The list goes on. Kernel stuff, drivers, storage, user changes, RPC, blah, 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 right? Now, you could shovel snow. You could build character, right? You could go and, and, and deploy Windows event collection, ETW collection, Sysmon on Linux, audit D and syslog, blah, 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 right? You tune some audit policies, deploy your WEC um, infrastructure, stand up a super awesome SIM, write 500 detections. The end of it, you're going to be like, yeah, I feel great, right? I shoveled this entire street. Do we have time for this? Some of us do. Some of us don't. You could do all that, or you could buy yourself a snowblower. Go buy an EDR and deploy it. Now, does that take one day? Of course not. But consider the fact that when you go buy an EDR, and I'm not here to sell you a Microsoft product, product, I promise, go buy some EDR and use it. Because the amount of time you're going to spend curating all of that data and managing all that data is going to go way down, especially if it's a cloud-based solution. And if you're going to get this huge detection library that you wouldn't otherwise have. And possibly better user experience. Yeah, you can look at 4688s in a console and you could put up some Jupyter notebooks and chain them all together and eventually be like, yeah, man, I use Neo4j. It's amazing. Or you could take an EDR that actually paints those process trees for you out of the box and then go focus on other things. When we talk about um, focus, what I'm recommending everybody to do is 
don't focus on writing the generic detections yourselves, right? Leverage an existing platform and an existing detection library. Move your focus to the custom capabilities you're building for your, for your Snowflake and your high-end customers. Custom apps, specific customers, known scenarios that should never occur, specific to that environment. Look at your past incidents. Look at what's going on with your partners and your competitors. Inspire it from your hunt. When we think about tracking that detection metadata, um, excuse me, let me back up for a second. So for all these detections, all these analytics, we should be tracking this in some kind of work tracking system. When, and I would recommend if you do that, create a custom work item type tracking the things um, that are shown on the screen here, possibly more. Who created it? When did they create it? When was it last modified and by whom? What's the status? Is it in prod or not? Right? What's the required source telemetry? What's the scope of assets being covered? What's the intent? So on and so forth. Right? This takes a while in advance. But if you do it right, it can yield amazing results. Now, I've seen people do this. And then what happens in some cases is that there's drift from the detection metadata to the detections that are in prod. How do we solve this problem? First of all, I would recommend having a parent-child relationship between your detection work item tracking specifically and the epics, user stories, and features that sit over it. Secondly, Include your detection IDs in both the alerts that fire in your analytic platform, be it SIEM or otherwise. And I saw a note here on the, the chat, is it SIEM or SIEM or SIM? I don't care, whatever works for you. Good one. Um, join your metadata against the detection ID so that you're looking for any of that discrepancy or drift. And that will allow your analyst to naturally drive that feedback loop to make sure that what is in your analytic repository, your, your tracking repository, matches what's actually running in your analytic platform. Moreover, I've seen some people use continuous integration, continuous delivery to actually push detections as code from the repo into their analytic platform, which is super awesome, but it's pretty advanced. That's relatively new. When we think about measuring coverage, when we've done all of this, usually we think of, about one dimension, right? The breadth of our coverage, both in terms of percentage and absolute number of coverage by assets, right? Um, Chris, if you ever hear him talk about this, talks about this, about uh, the notion of wilderness. If it's not tracked, managed, you know, CM'd, et cetera, that's wilderness, right? So that's why we track both percentage and absolute number of our coverage is, is to, to mitigate the issue of wilderness. You don't know what you don't know. This is the most common way I see SOX measure coverage. Now, with that said, thank you, MITRE, my former employer. Super awesome, your tax dollars at work here, attack and kill chain coverage. If you haven't looked at that, I recommend you do it. So we're actually now looking across the kill chain and saying what detection um, are we running compared to our adversary TTPs? Super cool. What I see more and more folks needing to do and starting to do are the are two more. Number one, the types of systems and resources being tracked, given the explosion of non-Windows IT, frankly, and the height of the computing stack. Network, host, for hardware, firmware, if applicable, OS, and application. Think about tracking your coverage along more than one dimension, potentially three or four. You're gonna find blind spots and it goes back to the first piece. People are always like, we need to get to 100, we need to get to 100%. I recommend against that strategy. And the reason why is, is that if you focus too much on that one dimension of coverage, you're gonna miss the other three. That's why I recommend measuring all four of them. After that, we need to test our detections. Now, I'm aware of at least three major ways to do this. Number one, breach as a service. There are a number of vendors now. This wasn't the case five, 10 years ago. There are a number of vendors now and open source capabilities that provide you the repeatable and automatable way of testing your detections along with other defenses. 
Number two, look at doing unit tests for your detections. This, like people who are not involved in development are like, wow, mind blown. Unit tests, what are you talking about? Some of the best socks I've seen will actually have a unit test for every detection that they're running, at least the ones that are, are signature or knowledge based. And now we repeat them. We don't just do it once when we write the detection or update the detection. We do it every day or every week or every month or something like that. And then finally, we all know about red and purple teaming. Seeing purple teaming, and I don't just mean red teaming with like a little notice to blue at the end. I mean like actual partnership between the folks in red and the folks in blue talking through this as they're doing what they're doing is a beauty to behold. Understanding we have limited capacity there and that's why we have the first two techniques. So in conclusion, my recommendation to you today, my ask to you today is be true to yourself, your analysts and your customers. When you collect a set of data, be clear to yourself and to others about what you're gonna do with it. Is that collected just in case with no detections? Is that routine vanilla monitoring detections? Or is that specialized customer specific scenarios? Level setting those expectations will prevent you and your customers and your management from being disappointed later. And then uh, the second point is leverage everything that you can. Don't reinvent the, reinvent the wheel. The, day old, the days of slap a sensor on it and call it good by itself no longer works. We have, a, have to have a multifaceted instrumentation and detection strategy, due in large part to the absolute explosion of monitoring scenarios, cloud, mobile, IT, non-traditional IT, et cetera. So with that, go forth and be successful. Here are some resources. I'm interested in and willing to take some uh, questions here in the hallway.